The Tempest Upon Texas. Over the past two years, a deadly freeze. Freezing rain on top of already impassable roads. Record rainfall and floods. Within a matter of like 10 minutes, the place is filled with water. Scorching heat followed by raging wildfires. People here in Carbon, Texas are picking up what's left of their community after an overnight fire destroyed much of their city. I've lost everything. Texas is home to some of the most extreme weather in North America. Is it coincidence or can we point to something else? Mother Nature's awesome fury or are we in Texas the co-authors of our own tragic tale? Drilling rigs, they're cropping up again all over the state of Texas. Great news for producers and operators and to the economy. Folks who live next door, they see it more as just a nuisance. But what they can't see is what we all should be worried about. Methane or leaking natural gas superheating the planet. And one of the worst spots in the world for it, right here in Texas. Texas, the oil and gas mecca, not only of the United States, but we are the fourth highest producer of fossil fuel in the world. Here in the Permian Basin, a stretch of land covering 75,000 miles in West Texas, beneath the ground sits the largest oil reserve in the United States. More drilling occurs here than in any place in the country. But according to Climate Trace, a consortium of independent researchers studying greenhouse gas pollution around the world, the Permian Basin is by far and away the largest single source of pollution on the planet. At a distant number two, an oil and gas field in Russia. The war in Ukraine, combined with a post-pandemic spike in fuel consumption, has put renewed pressure on oil and gas producers in Texas. The state must produce more to meet demand, meaning more stress on aging infrastructure and more methane and toxic byproducts billowing into the sky. Methane, for example, can warm the climate system with about, about 100 times more strength than the same amount of carbon dioxide. Gita Prasad is a climate scientist at UT Austin, just one of many from around the globe studying the harmful effects of methane gas. While CO2 emissions have a more long-lasting effect, she says methane leaking from oil and gas facilities is many times worse. She says together, they are the main contributors to climate change. So we really don't want this methane escaping anywhere in our supply chain, whether it's directly through these leaks or through flaring that might be converting that methane partially into carbon dioxide, entirely into carbon dioxide, or not at all. All of those are bad outcomes from a climate perspective. The most renowned tracker of methane pollution in Texas, if not the nation, is Sharon Wilson with Oilfield Witness. She's a former senior field advocate for the nonprofit organization Earthworks and has provided evidence and testimony to NATO and to the EPA. Making some clean energy out here. Wilson and her colleagues travel the state with infrared cameras, documenting something the human eye cannot see. Clouds billowing into the sky. That's raw methane and affiliated toxins called volatile organic compounds spewing out of vent stacks and storage tanks at oil and gas processing plants around the state. Wilson is convinced after more than a decade of research, the problem is worse than ever. She says even advanced filtering technology installed by many operators is not helping. A few weeks ago, we were in the Permian and we observed 26 sites. All of them were emitting. Of the 26 sites, 14 had observable vapor recovery systems. Of the 14, 100% were failing. 
and I mean failing in a big way. Wilson often teams up with the nonprofit Environmental Defense Fund. A recent study by the EDF reveals the Permian Basin releases nearly three times more methane than the EPA has previously estimated. 1.4 million metric tons every year, enough natural gas to meet the needs of nearly two million homes. It is one of the leakiest basins in the United States, um, but what we found is that many oil producing basins do tend to have higher emissions than natural gas emitting, natural gas producing basins. And I think a lot of that problem is, is due to, to flares, particularly in the Permian. The Environmental Defense Fund first began collecting aerial methane data in 2019 and conducted more than 100 flights across the Permian Basin for two years using airplanes and helicopters, documenting methane leaks from thousands of wells and production facilities. So they would fly over the area, kind of in a lawnmower pattern, and then would actually see the normally invisible methane with their instrument. And they could both visualize the plume so they could see where, which exact site the, oil, the methane was coming from, and quantify the emission rate. Um, so this approach allowed us to survey thousands of sites very quickly and find many, many large emitters and then send that data to operators and other stakeholders so they could reduce those emissions. The question becomes, if we have the data, what's being done to stop the flow of greenhouse gases? Texas has no rules prohibiting methane releases, but the gas must be burned off or flared like this. But first, plant operators must obtain a permit from the Texas Railroad Commission, and at that, only limited amounts can be flared. Flaring natural gas is a highly regulated process, most commonly used in crude oil production, in which excess natural gas is burned off at a well site. This reduces pollution and protects public safety by burning flammable gas rather than releasing it into the atmosphere. The Environmental Defense Fund and Earthworks Texas claim that as much as 84% of the flaring activity in Texas is unpermitted and unchecked. They say state regulators are doing little or nothing to measure how much flaring is going on or how much methane, carbon dioxide, or toxins are being released into the air. Railroad Commission officials declined to comment to Spectrum News about the findings but it is on record calling the earthworks analysis flawed and based on incomplete data or inaccurate assumptions. The Environmental Defense Fund says about one in 10 of the flares in the Permian Basin they documented two years ago were malfunctioning and venting methane gas directly into the air. Venting, equipment malfunctioning, there are leaks, there are pipes where they vent gas intentionally. They just release it to the air. The flares are malfunctioning. There's black carbon going everywhere, smoke. Um, it's, it smells, it's horrible. I mean, there's hydrocarbon over the entire horizon. Environmental was... consultant Tim Doty works with Wilson in tracking polluters. He says regulatory oversight is a big problem in Texas and he would know he was one of the top methane pollution inspectors in the state. And when, you, when it comes to climate causing gases like methane and, and carbon dioxide, they have no interest in measuring it at all. In fact, they don't track it. Coming up. But holy moly, you should see the, what's coming out of there. Unchecked toxic and greenhouse emissions. Doty says state regulators are doing little to stop. This is not the exception to the rule. This is the rule.